what's going on guys uh, now i know it's been a while since we uploaded anything to the channel uh to be honest it's been a while since we recorded anything on the channel um long story short man life happened and life happened hard uh, if you saw the last video then you kind of already know what uh what's going on but quick summary about 10 months ago um i lost my mom actually right in the middle of recording the last video that uh that I made so yeah like I said life happened and that was kind of just the first of a, a long line of events that happened but anyway I'm actually in a not so new but new to the channel project car uh, and as you can see it is it's full of parts it is full of parts and um, yeah we'll start getting them on so, I guess I can just introduce you guys to the car. stock brakes and he absolutely cooked them out there on the track uh, which if you've been to VIR or to any track day you know that's no surprise at all for stock brakes but anyway we've got big brakes from Z1 uh, so we're gonna throw those on uh, full disclosure we've already done the rear brakes it's a big mishap we've been trying to upgrade the brakes for about a year now uh, anyway we finally got what we hope is the right brake kit and uh, yeah, let's get them thrown on and test them out. Let's open up these boxes and see what we got in there. All right, so first up, we got brake line. All right, that's the hardware for the disc. This is what gave us trouble before when we tried to do the big brake kit. We didn't get the right adapters with it. Um, so the only big brake kits really are for like a 370. Uh, you just have to put adapters on there to fit a 350. Uh, so hopefully it works out this time. Let's see, we got our pads. And we got our, especially with two of the same boxes. I can only assume these are the calipers for the right and left side. Let's uh, check that out. I'll tell your sister it's okay, she can come out and, and play still. She's not in trouble. That's exactly what it is. Nice four pop big brake kit. And then of course this next box is just gonna be our rotors. piece rotor all right we're gonna set all this up and then uh get the car up on jack stands chalk the wheels because the driveway's at a little bit of a slope and uh yeah we'll start pulling it off all right so it's a new day uh, i had some issues getting the wheel lugs off uh anyway as you see got them off now got my little helper here with me we 
We've already got the uh, old caliper off. It's kind of just hanging down there. And then uh, we went ahead and got this bracket installed. Uh, and yeah, we'll do the same thing on the other side and I'll show you guys how it looks. But for now, I'm gonna finish up. I'm gonna torque this uh, bracket down. And then I'm going to go ahead and throw the rotor, caliper on, brake lines, all that other stuff. Uh, hopefully, when we go to the other side, it'll be a little better conditions for filming. Let's go do that. You ready, dude? All right, so we're on to the other side. It's still super windy out, but I did say I'd try and get a little more recording done on this side. Uh, don't have the kids running around anymore. So, uh, passenger side gave me all kinds of problems. Uh, hopefully the driver's side will be a little more friendly to me. On the passenger side, for the life of me, I cannot get that brake line to break free from the, uh, the soft line. Uh, so I, I just kind of ran the stock brake line back up to it. Luckily on this side, I was able to get the brake line broken free before I did anything else. Uh, so I, I don't know if that was just my mistake on the other side, trying to wait until I had already done other stuff and pulled that clip. Um, but either way, you know, damage is done. I'll end up just cutting or replacing that fitting. And um, if I have to, I'll just run a new brake line. It's something I've done before. Um, it's not super complicated, but it just sucks that I let it get to this point. All right, so like we said, we got the caliper off. Uh, once again, these were torqued down way past spec thanks to uh, the Nissan dealership. Um, so now we're going to take our bracket and that's going to fit in there like that. But I got to get my uh, bolts and the, uh, the thread locker. All right, so here are the bolts. But for these, you're going to reuse the washer off of the factory bolt. Now, the instructions don't say to, but I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of thread locker to that. You know, it does say to torque those down evenly, so I'm just going to hand tighten them. Okay. We use our washer, thread locker. Still just hand tightening that, not torquing it down. And the reason I'm not torquing it down is because it says to torque them in even passes up to 75 foot pounds. My torque wrench only goes to 50 at its lowest. So I'm gonna do a 50 pound pass, and then a 75 pound pass. Bring it up to 75. Okay. 
And that's it for the bracket. And cramping surface. That's it for that side. Next step is mounting the caliper to the actual, uh, mounting the caliper to the bracket. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and pre-position the brake line into the caliper so I can torque that down. All right, we're going to get this caliper pin in there. I've already pre-run my brake line. I better hurry up because my background noise is my family heading out to my son's baseball game and uh, I gotta be there for him. Same thing, these are 98 foot pounds. So that's it for the uh, for getting the caliper in. I have to throw the pads in, brake line in, and we'll probably end up bleeding them tomorrow because I'm running out of daylight. And like I said, I gotta get to my kids' baseball game. Time to get the pads in. Get rid of that grease on the back of the pads. Here. 
this point, I'm gonna squeeze the gloves off. And everything right now. Closure this wind's no joke today. All right, guys, so after a lot of really windy and rainy weather, I uh, wasn't able to get a whole lot of it actually recorded. Uh, there was also a bunch of running back and forth to the uh, tool store to get a bunch of different tools. Stuff that if I would have just read the uh, read the instructions first, I probably would have known I needed. Um, that's on me, not on Z1. They put in their instructions exactly what tools you need. I just did the typical Skunk Works thing and ignored the instructions for the most part. Except for Torque Specs. I definitely got the Torque Specs right. Um, I don't play around when it comes to that anymore. Uh, but here's a look at what they look like. So let's see. Camera angle's weird, but we got the big brake kit on. Uh, for the most part, I got everything bled. I do, I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, flush the entire brake fluid system. Uh, just because I'm not sure how many air pockets got put in there with the rear brakes when I unhook the brake lines up front. Also, the rear brakes, which got done like a year ago, uh, there are big brakes as well, but that's really the same fluid in the system back there. So after driving a Hyperfest and a bunch of other events, I think it's time to just get all of it out, get some uh, fresh fluid in there, and get ready to send it again next season. But I am gonna wait until we do the coilovers. That way, uh, once I have the wheel off and everything up in the air, I can just do that all at once. Uh, put the coilover in and pull the brake fluid out. And then, um, yeah, we'll get this thing flush. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching this video, guys. Really appreciate it. Make sure you uh, subscribe, uh, like the video, uh, anything helps us out. And uh, don't forget to check out the website, www.skunkworksprojects.com. Uh, not only do we sell merch there, but we are also uh, licensed dealers from a few manufacturers, including Fuel Injector Clinic. So please check us out there. And then uh, follow us on Instagram as well, at skunkworks.projects. All right, till the next video, guys. Hold up. All right, so let's see a few of the issues we're running into right now. First thing was the uh, e-brake behind here. They just, it's a tighter fit between the, the uh, not the drum, but the, the rotor and then the e-brake. So you just kind of have to, Work that little lever down there, and I'll show you after I show you the clearance issue, which is the second thing. Okay. Dust shield is needs a little bit of massaging to come out. I'll set you guys down and show you the e brake. All right, so these my shoes or whatever expanded a little too wide to fit with the. Uh, Z1 rotor. Let's see if we can spin this a little bit more. Kind of close that gap. So.
right, so bracket side for the rotor is simple enough. It's got a little note that says rotor side that goes towards the caliper. Thread the screws into the top and through the side. And these screws are what's going to mount to the actual bracket on the hub. So, all right, so redo. The uh, bracket actually goes on the inside like that. And then still threads in through the top and bolts on back there. Basically done on this brake side. Then we still cutting with this stuff on the other side. But it's uh, starting to rain too, so. What do you think? Are you gonna try to record a clip real quick? And right, so we're basically done on this side. We got the rotors, calipers, pads, brake lines, everything put in. Um, still cutting the dust cover on the other side. And it's starting to rain, so we'll probably just check in once all the rears are done. And then we'll kind of just walk through what happened.